I made my first million in less than a year, but if I'd listened to everyone else, I would still be stuck in a job. Now I get to do what I love, but only because I learned the truth about money, which is very different from what most of us are taught. What would you do with your first ever profit in your business? I can hear my parents' voice in my head already saying, save it. I was taught that there is only one way to handle money. Earn as much as you can, save as much as possible, repeat. But that feels incredibly unmotivating. That's why I love this contrarian story from Barbara Corcoran. Spoiler alert, she sold her real estate company for $66 million. When I turned 35, I made my very first profit in the Corcoran Group. It was the end of the year and I still had $40,000 in the account. I realized it was a miracle. Until that point, I put every penny the company made back into the business. I spotted a car dealership as I was riding down the West Side Highway that afternoon and told the taxi to pull over. I walked into the showroom and pointed to the smallest car thinking it'd be the cheapest. What's that cute brown car in the corner? A 911 Carrera. That's the brand? No ma'am, it's a Porsche. <laughs> and how much is it? About $40,000. I'll take it. <laughs> Having fun with money, motivating yourself that way feels a lot better, to me at least. But that's the point. You can be like Warren Buffett, who is super frugal and is motivated to reinvest his earnings. You can be like Barbara or somewhere in between. Once you stop forcing yourself to follow made up rules, because that's what they are, you'll have so much more fun with money, which will motivate you to make so much more. But Motivation can run out. Personally, I'm most tempted to give up when I feel like I'm behind. But when I feel that way, I remind myself of one man's inspirational story. I was 66 years old. I still had to make a living. I looked at my social security check of $105 and decided to use that to try and franchise my chicken recipe. This man traveled from restaurant to restaurant trying to sell his recipe. 1,009. That's how many times he was turned down before one restaurant decided to buy his recipe. I know if I was in his shoes, I would have been thinking it's too late, it's not gonna happen, but he didn't let himself go there. Which is why by the time he was 75, Colonel Sanders had over 600 franchises selling his recipe, all because he refused to think it's too late. A good deadline can help you achieve your goal. But when we're aiming for really big goals that we might not even fully believe in yet, a deadline just gives you an excuse to give up. The reality is, success has no deadline. In case you needed to hear this today, I truly believe that as long as you don't give up, getting to your big dreams is just a matter of when, not if. That doesn't mean you can't make things happen faster though, but you wanna look out for this super common mistake. When I was still in my nine to five trying to build my business on the side, my mom did this one thing I'm convinced saved my business. Every week I'd call my mom and tell her, oh, I don't believe this thing just happened in my job. I'm definitely gonna turn in my notice next month. But thank goodness my mom believes in telling it like it is. She'd say, just wait a little longer. That's the reason I was able to build my first business to six figures before I left my nine to five. Because I kept on working the job, I didn't have to stress about needing to make sales in my business. That made me a lot more attractive to potential clients because I could be confident and detached with my sales. Plus, I was able to grow the business faster because I had a little more money to invest. This is not the typical story you hear of burning the bridges and hoping for the best. I will never recommend that you take unnecessary risks because it's not just your future on the line, it's also your loved ones. But the good news is you don't have to. The more you put yourself in a place of strength, the more money will be naturally attracted to you. But you wanna look out for a trap that a lot of people fall into. My parents, God bless them, did their best to raise me, but they also taught me a major lesson that I had to unlearn, which almost cost me my business. There's this contradiction known as the Easterlin paradox. Economist Richard Easterlin found that a country's richer citizens are happier than its poorer ones. That part's not the contradiction. But what is surprising is that 
as countries become richer, their citizens don't become happier. Easterlin reasoned that it's because our happiness depends not on how much we have, but on how much more we have than others. This makes a lot of sense to me because it sums up my childhood in a nutshell. <laughs> when I got better grades or more awards than the other kids, my parents would be so proud of me. But when their friends' kids did better, I'd feel like I'd failed. But in business, there is always someone who makes more money or has a bigger business than you. I started burning out, I was constantly unhappy, and I spent so much money trying to play catch up to people further ahead than me. I think the best way to beat this is to first understand that we're programmed that way. Then set goals that you truly want. Don't get distracted trying to play someone else's game. This is the only way you can truly win. Now, Part of my definition of winning is having success that lasts. High five to that, am I right? But this is where the cautionary tale of crumbs comes in. It was founded in New York City where I live. Plus I love sweets, so this really hit home for me. The crazy thing is it was once the biggest cupcake vendor in the world, but they became a victim of their own success. They expanded into too many new cities too fast. Their sales couldn't keep up. Eventually, they had to file for bankruptcy. I love fast results as much as the next person, but easy come, easy go. I'd much rather build something that lasts, even if it takes a little longer. However, how long it'll take you depends on one key habit. It's something I noticed after personally having worked with over a thousand clients to help them build their businesses. Take client A who wanted to be a recovery coach. She had the story, credentials, and experience, but this isn't an industry that's known to support high coaching prices. However, client A was able to make her first sale for over $10,000. Even though I am really good at helping people build their businesses, that's unfortunately not how it goes for all of my clients. Take client B, a health coach. Even though she also had incredible experience, skills, and credentials, she just could not make a sale for over $1,000. As the coach for both of them, I can tell you the one thing that made the difference. For the woman who struggled to make the $1,000 sale, in her mind, she could only be worthy of that money if she was perfect. But for the client who easily sold a $10,000 plus package, to her, it was just a number. Her client was willing to pay it, so she didn't feel any pressure or guilt. You get to decide the meaning you give money, which means you can change it too, especially if you wanna be able to make more. You know that saying, it takes money to make money? I disagree. Of course it helps, but money is never the limiter when it comes to you making more. One of my favorite examples of this is Zuckerberg's company. I know it's called Meta now, but to me it will always be Facebook. They spent $15 billion to try and make the metaverse a thing, but there was no clear direction and nobody wanted it. It's one of the biggest failures and wastes ever, but it really proves the point that money is not the make or break factor. When you have less money, you just get to be more creative with your other forms of currency, like your time, skills, talent, and experience. Start seeing how it's possible to get big results, but in a simpler and faster way. I break it down for you in this next video, how I went from zero to seven figures in one year by doing less.